Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Campbell. And this is Smart Smart Money Money Happy Happy Hour. Hour. (gasps) Cheers, George. Cheers. I'm not going to lie. I was sipping on this before we started. That is some dirty water, Rachel. That's (laughs) what we call it in the biz. It's actually delicious. It's great. But this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And in the words of country music icon Martina McBride, this one's for the girls. Yes, and the guys. Sure. The guys (laughs) are going to actually get more out of this because I'm trying to help them understand what's happening to them. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we're going to explain many girl trends going on right now, including girl math. Those of you, there's a lot of people that know girl math. And it's been a thing that's been talked about, you know, recently. So we're going to dive in because it's a great money trend. A lot of Gen Z terminology. They love to come up with some new terms. I know. They're funny. I'm not going to lie. They bring some levity to life. They keep us on our toes. Yes, they do. So what are we going to sip on, though, George, while we're talking about this girl math? Well, just like girls like to forget how much money they spent, we're sipping on a drink called the Mind Eraser. Oh, the Mind Eraser. Thought that was appropriate for this episode. So stick around till the end of the episode. We're going to give you our rating, reveal the cost, and give you the recipe. That's right. Okay, so George, you are officially a girl dad. Oh my gosh, it's so real. How are you feeling about it? I feel helpless. Do you? I just feel like she's going to get whatever she wants. At first, I was like, my girl, my kid's not going to be entitled. Then we found out we were having a girl. I was like, I'll buy her a horse. Yeah, (laughs) whatever she wants. It's fine. Whatever she needs. (laughs) Yeah, she's precious. So good. Okay, so I I assume being a girl dad, maybe you're up to date on all the girl terminology going around these days. I'm trying to keep up. I feel like I have a lot to learn about women now. And I'm learning a lot just changing diapers, Rachel. Yeah, well, I'm going to quiz you. On some of these trends. Are you ready for this? Thank you. Okay. Go. Uh, do you know the trend girl dinner? Yes, because okay. I studied this. We covered it on the Ramsey show. <gasps> okay. Ken Coleman and I. Oh, I, I didn't know this. And it is when, the, correct me if I'm wrong, it's when girls take a bunch of random like snacks and then call it dinner. Yes. And then it was so relatable that girls everywhere were like, girl dinner. Girl dinner. And I think about Scandal, the show. Carrie Washington was always classic, like, popcorn glass of wine. That counts. That's, like, that's girl dinner. That's girl dinner, right? Yeah. You just kind of get some stuff together. You know, charcuterie could be like a fancier yeah. term. That's kind of actually, a tapas vibe. You know, just yeah. a few small, little hummus here, a little pepper there. Yeah, we're going to just a put meal. some stuff out. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's girl dinner. Uh, okay, how about this? Girl math. That's the big one I've heard about. Yes, this is funny. There's been some viral TikToks that, honest, they made me laugh. I didn't want to admit it because there's a lot of truth to it. Yeah, because girl math is basically women justifying unnecessary spending expenses or unnecessary amounts of money they spend just to, like, make it make sense. Yeah, And and when you hear it as a woman, you're like, it makes sense. Like, I can follow the girl math vibe. Well, this has been going on for centuries. We just didn't have a name for it until Gen Z was like, let's give it a trendy name to make it it sound less toxic. We're going to talk more about this later in the episode because it's going to, it makes sense. We're like, we're going to explain it more with some examples so you can understand how we can justify spending because that's what happens in our culture. Okay. We all can justify spending. But like you said, Gen Z just put a little fun twist to it to make it justify the justify. Say what you will about Gen Z. They make life more fun. They do. Okay, how about this one, George? Uh, Lazy girl jobs. This one still confuses me. What I understand about it is they want to do like the bare minimum so they have more work-life balance. Yes. Is that the vibe? That's basically it. It's kind of almost, it feels a little bit of that quiet quitting trend where it's kind of like, I'm going to just do what I need to do so that I can still like live a great life. And not be exhausted all the time, right? Like, I'm going to just So this kinda, is the opposite of, like, I'm going to work extra hours to try to get the boss. promotion. It's the opposite of a girl boss. Like, you're oh, like, I'm going to be a girl boss. Oh, that's a good way to say it. Opposite of that. It's and they're not like, actually lazy. They're just not wanting to go the extra mile. Yeah, we're going to just— They're not putting 100%. Yeah, we're going to just stay within the lanes and not try to bust through any glass ceiling, if you will. There we go. That's too much work. What's your take on that? Um— I'm somewhere in the middle. I do think that kind of the girl boss vibe of like, you can do everything. That you was can a do little all. aggressive. It's a little bit like not true. Just because like you can't do everything. And that means if you need help, you're somehow weak. Or if you choose not to go oh. full fledged into your career, somehow you're lazy. You know what I mean? Like that. It was a little toxic if you take it to the extreme. I think. But then the lazy. Yeah. But then also like there's a time and place that, yeah, you got to put in the hours and you got to step it up sometimes. Right. In certain seasons of work or whatever it may be. So like. I, w- I would go somewhere in the middle, George, personally. Yeah, there's a spectrum from, like, my career is my identity 
to I do the bare minimum and I'm just fine floating by in life. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's a little bit of like, yeah, find a little oomph in what you do. A little pep in your find step. Find your oomph. A little pep in your step, if you will. Uh, so yeah, so that's a, uh, that's a mentality for sure. Okay, uh, so George, how much do you think work-life balance is worth? Ooh, like put a number on it? Oh, I don't know. But like what, like, like that idea, because that's a little bit of like the lazy girl jobs. Like they just want to balance. Well, I, I think we have a real toxic view of work. Like the younger generations think work is evil. And if you have a job working for someone else, then you must hate your life and it's going to be terrible. Yeah. We have fun jobs. So yeah. I would tell them, go find things you enjoy doing that also make money. And that's out there. Our friend Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, covers us on a show every Talks day. About this helping a lot. people do this. Yep. So I would say it's work is not evil. I agree. Don't work 60 hours a week forever. That's not an okay yep. life. But also just floating by and just going like, well, I'm just here for the paycheck. That's also going to be unfulfilling. You're at yep. work for eight hours a day. Totally. I want that to be fulfilling. Yeah. You want to enjoy those 40 hours because you're there a lot, right? Yeah. For like a for a pretty standard job. So yeah, I agree, George. I would say. I would say the same. You know? I think it's good, yeah. I think it's good for people to work, but yes. not in a toxic environment, not for toxic people in a toxic place, yeah. doing something they hate. Yeah. That's not how life has to go. Sure. But I do wonder, like, from the girl's perspective, the woman's perspective, aka lazy girl jobs, uh, because there are moms that are home oh, with yeah. kids, you know what I mean? And that's a level of work. That that's is, about the opposite of lazy girl job. For sure. Oh, my gosh. But— but they're not the hustle and grind either. So I always want to give them props because they can get lost in that. Well, then they feel that, guilty like, that, and like, feel shame. Yeah, when people right? have the megaphone of like, go kill it, go, go, go. Where it's like, what if I, what if I just want to be home? And not just be home. That's, there's a lot of work involved. But like, there's dignity in that too. So yeah. it can go both what ways. What I'm hearing is just grace, Rachel. Just give yourself <laughs> grace. A lot of grace. A lot of grace. You have to put this. your hand out when you do it. Give just, yourself grace. Just give yourself grace. Just give yourself really grace. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about this one? Rat Girl Summer. I love it based on the name alone. I had never heard of this until we were f- doing this episode. I did not know about this trend. Can I say that? It feels somehow derogatory for me to say Rat Girl Summer. <laughs> it's can you give me permission? Yes, go, George. You can say it. Okay. They're Rachel Cruz there. said, I can say Rat Girl Summer. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of an extension of the lazy girl job trend. And this is apparently like opposite of hot girl summer. Okay, yes, yes, where they're all <laughs> where it's like, like I have to get primped and all the things, yes. makeup, outfits. This is we're swinging the pendulum the opposite yeah, way. We're like greasy hair in a scrunchie with a sweatshirt. Throw it in a bun, call it good. Yep, we're just we're doing. That. Been there, Rachel. <laughs> Been there. Been there, done that. During like COVID, when we were all at home, mm-hmm. I think I was rat girl. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> It got dark. And there's a part that's like everyone needs a little rat girl in their life. I do feel like because not What's every- your version of that? Uh, like would you shower? Wear, uh, okay. Wash the hair every four days. It's going back in a low pony. Uh, we're going to not like revolutionary style pony. Oh, like okay. I was thinking cute. George Washington. Yeah, no. not George Washington low pony, like cute bun low it pony. It was giving Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go Jefferson feels. Um, we're going more like Selena Gomez, low pony vibe from like, you know, the great. That's your top choice is Selena? She has a great low pony. You should check it out. <laughs> really? Yeah. I she like that's her personal pony. brand is low pony girl. Uh, for rat girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't go as much up as <laughs> low with the hair. I'm learning a lot about ponies. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. And then for sure, like gym shorts and a, and a great, you know, sweatshirt. I like this. I prefer, like, my wife, Whitney, just, like, big T-shirt, hair yeah. not done. I love We're that. We're there. We're all in that. We can do and the date season, night and full makeup and all it. that once in a while. Yes. But it's, yes. Like, it sounds exhausting. Oh, yeah. I, I know. think about that for women. I'm like, y'all have to redo all of this every day. Yeah, but you can go minimal, which is kind of my life right now. And then I went down the rabbit hole, George, which I talk about comparison a lot. So this was a rabbit hole I shouldn't have been down. Down a bunch of, like, like influencer, like, like done up influencer oh. women and they're all friends with each other. I didn't know this, but I went down this black hole, rabbit hole of like all these women. And I did feel tired physically after looking at their profiles for a bit. So I was like, they do, they're they're done up a lot. Once you know how that routine goes. They're done up a lot where I just need like, give me a little powder, a little, a little uh bronzer, eyeliner, mascara. I'm done. Like I'm not three things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's if Winston's that, routine comparatively? 
Very minimal. Is he uh, anything? No, he's a nothing. Wow. I don't think he's anything. And he still has that rugged he, look. He needs a he needs a little hair product. He's grown out his hair. So you could help him, George, with this. He's maybe looking for some hair Winston, products. Winston, hit me up, bro. I don't we, know why we're communicating this way. <laughs> I could just text you, but I'm gonna wait for you to listen to this podcast for the invite. I know. Whitney's low maintenance, I feel like. Oh, she's yeah. beautiful, but I feel like she's not like She's at that stage, like when she got pregnant, it was like I mm-hmm. I can't care Life anymore. Life is a little bit better. But like she's that. she's naturally beautiful and yes, that's why is. I chose her. Oh, oh <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> that smile. I don't know why I did that. Love you, girl. Oh, love ya. Love ya. Okay. Uh, George, I feel like, you know, uh, you should test my girl math abilities. We talked about this earlier, but the girl math I can buy vi- I can like I can vibe with. I sound like a Gen Zer. I blame all the young people I work it with. It sounded the fact authentic that I say when you said I can it. vibe with. <laughs> Lindsay said truth. earlier I die. And I was like, that is a Gen Zer. I should I need to adopt oh, with that no too. D at the end? Yeah. That's a thing? Yeah, it's like a present I tense. I yes. die. Yeah. Present tense. That's really cool. They're rubbing off on wow, us. Wow, I didn't even know I did that. You did. You <laughs> said I die. I was like, she is so hip. It's just cool that sabotaging grammar that was fine for <laughs> centuries is now like, this is cool now. This yeah. is what we do. I yeah. know. It's what it is. You form a normal sentence, you're an old. I know. You, might, you know my new favorite one, though? I heard this and I think it's- Oh, I can't wait. Um, main like you have main character energy. Oh, I do like that one. I oh, love that one. That's from um, that's from the holiday when the old man tells her like you're the main character in your own story. Is that correct? Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. You're remember dating that? yourself, Rachel. Do you remember that in the holiday where the old man with I Kate Winslet and he says you're not the supporting oh, yeah, role. You're the main you're character. The main character. Wow. Wow. Full circle. Wow. You are so excited about this, and I love that I for don't you. say, okay, and then I do have so someone on our great. team, and she says it to me, and it makes me just feel good. She's like, you are, uh, what a queen. Oh. And I'm like, I love that. <laughs> I've never We've got a few said it I haven't gotten that before. Conversation. Maybe by the end of this episode, I will end up saying it. I've been called short king. I don't think it's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a compliment, but oh, shoot. I'll take it. You'll take it. You That's have short good. king vibes. Short of a king main, energy. Of a, of, a, of, a, of a main character. That just reminds me of like Napoleon. I feel like this guy's got an axe to grind and he's going to take over a few countries to deal with it. I can see that, George. You could you could take like the lazy girl summer, the lazy girl work. What was that one? Um, lazy girl job. Lazy girl job. You could get all them. this together and take over Belgium. I think the guys need some trends. <laughs> the guys have been phoning it in with the trends. Yes. It's time. I know. The girls have stepped up recently. With they the have. trends. Well, George, what trend views. would you create for the guys? For the guys? Yeah, let's hear them. Is like Short King Summer, can we make that a thing? <laughs> what does that even mean? Like you have to We be celebrate short? the little guys out there doing their best <laughs> who don't have to rely on their height for their personalities. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Give me another one. What's another one? That's oh, a good gosh. One. Something with um, that. Like skater vibes. Hygiene homies? <laughs> Guys who floss, Hygiene homies. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's a good guys one. who take care of themselves. I think we didn't normalize guys and self care. You know, it's not mani pedis. It's just like, hey, did you brush today? <laughs> did, did, did we check out that cowlick? Okay, What's that? Not even that. that but you go four steps more. What does that With mean? With the flossing and the mouth. Well, I mean, you like do the whole routine. That's not above and beyond. I feel like that's baseline, Rachel. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jordan, you know how I, I feel about w- gentle hygiene. I didn't know I'm mouthwash was now like, <laughs> you do got. mouthwash over the top. Yes. My grandpa would do the brown Listerine back in his day. This is not a new concept. If you have an electric toothbrush, it's just as good as the dentist. Oh, no. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> the the dentist. dentist. The toothbrush people. The tooth fairy. The toothbrush people. Your kids are losing teeth, aren't they? Well, because of age and the world. I'm just saying, <laughs> they may not have if they went to the dentist. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> they do yeah, need to go to I think Hygiene Homie Summer is going to be the next good. thing. That's good. I think that's a great one. I'm starting it. But let's test your girl math, Rachel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because let's see if I can like take a situation and justify it with girl math because I do this a lot in my real life. So I'm, I'm going to give you a scenario. Okay. You walk me through it and then we'll unpack how the heck it works. Okay. You're in your happy place. You're shopping at Nordstrom. I imagine that's where well, yeah, we're gonna a go woman big. of your caliber likes to go for we're main character big. energy. Let's do it. You're looking for a new outfit for an upcoming vacation. Okay. Winston, you and Winston are going on an anniversary trip. Perfect. We're going to go. Not Hawaii. Too basic for you. We're going to Bora Bora. 
Overwater bungalow. Wow. wow. Holy crap. Overwater bungalow. We're going, all right, we're going Do to Do those words list. mean anything to you? Bucket list vacation yeah. is where we're going. So this is high stakes. Okay. This you, is an easy justification if it's this. You've for given going to yourself, Destin, that's one thing. Get Bora this, Bora. Rachel. For this very expensive vacation, you have a budget of $75 for the dress of your dreams. Okay. <laughs> and you find it. You find it, but the dress is 125, not 75. We're going 125. Walk me through the girl math equation. How do you go ahead and justify this in your brain? Uh, you definitely spend the extra $50 to get what you want because if I don't get it, girl math would say that I would be really sad because it'd be one night going to the special anniversary dinner that's on the beach, candle it, the whole thing. And I would think this is when I would have wore that dress and then I would be sad. And then the vacation would kind of be ruined. And with that vacation would have cost, what, tens of thousands? I mean, that's like a crazy trip. So tens of thousands of dollars just down the drain wow. because you saved 50. Well, and knowing you, you've done the math on like, well, I'm not going to just wear this once. So if you count it per wear, it oh, brings the that cost too. down. Oh, yeah, because you would at least do it. But that's a fancy dress. I mean, like, so so we're talking like probably five times a summer would probably last you yeah, five, six, seven summers. So at least that's like a good 35, 40 wears. 40 wears? <laughs> of the dress over its lifetime, sure. That's impressive. What happens in that seventh summer? Does the dress deteriorate? Like no, it's some kind of Avengers changes level? changes and it's donezo. Oh, it's a fashion thing. Because people yeah. say like, well, it's it's, it's past no, its No, I would course. think if you're 125 on a dress, it's not like an Amazon $30 dress that would deteriorate and probably dissolve into the world seven years later. Wow. But 125, I would expect it to hold its... I don't its destroy... Form. I don't know what people are doing to clothing, but mine don't get like destroyed. Yeah. You know? Like my I, clothes will last forever. Because you probably forever. buy quality clothes though. That's like true. Like you're not buying off Amazon. Like I'll buy thirty dollars oh, dresses off Amazon. I did get one of those like polos, those knit polos on Amazon. Oh yeah, good for you. I love it. Yeah, they're great. They're great. So there you go. Good. I'm an so Amazon. That's the girl guy. math. It's basically wasting tens of thousands of dollars on a vacation that you're sad about. Ver you know, for fifty dollars. Do you ever so create like I want to go on? I want to buy this. Therefore, I need and a reason to buy it. Therefore, I will plan a date or vacation in order to buy this dress. No, I'm the opposite. Usually the event is planned, and then I think about what Then to you wear. justify yeah, the purchase. then I justify the purchase. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay, that's that's helpful, actually. Like, I, I bought an outfit that I wore this summer. We went on a trip, Taylor Swift, Seattle. Then we went to Napa for two days at home. So we were on four different planes, and I wore the same outfit on each plane. It was, like, my plane outfit. Okay. And it was from Amazon, $40. It was a cute two-piece, like— Matching? Yep. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Uh, who knew dry cleaning was on the tag? I didn't. So I washed it because it had had a lot of Southwest on it. And it was absolutely ruined. I had to throw it away. I mean, it was just, it was The ruined. audacity. So then I looked and it was dry cleaning for a $40 outfit, which is That's very strange. That interesting. should be illegal to make clothing that is dry clean. Yeah, only. so my question is, would you, would you not buy something be based on like how the upkeep is of it? 100%. If yeah. I can't maintain it, it's, I'm out. You're out. Yeah. Well, guess what? I bought it again. So we're gonna make dry cleaning. <laughs> can I be honest, Rachel? I try to dry clean my button-up shirts. I loved it so much. It was so cute. For longevity, I try to dry clean my button-up shirts okay, once in a while. Yes, that's fair. This one's dry. Can you tell? It is. It's very starch looking. It's, it has not been starched, from oh, to my knowledge. Okay. Okay. That's okay. great. Girl math scenario number two. Okay. You find a pair of shoes in your car that you forgot to return a few weeks ago. Ooh, yeah. You look at the receipt. They're still eligible to be returned for a full refund. Okay. You take them to the store. And Tiffany, with an I, that's an important detail. She's behind the register. Oh, she hands you $45 in cash for your return. So cash return. Mm -hmm. What does girl math say? I just made $45. <laughs> does that money go into the budget since it was cash? Or does it disappear into the ether? It disappears into the ether. It goes Winston into the Rachel is none the wiser. It goes into the Rachel Cruz uh, slim wallet pocket. And uh, next time I'm at Shalotsky's, <laughs> pull that out. Or Wendy's. And I, or Wendy's. <laughs> Pull that sucker out, and then I get a free meal. Wow. I mean, it's a lot of free stuff happening right now. Free money, free meals. So in your mind, at some point, the $45 was budgeted to buy the shoes. Yeah, what but was not in the budget was the income from returning said shoes. That's it right. It does not then have a home in the budget. No. Especially if it's a cash return. And especially if it's at least 30 days out. If you're in a different month in your budget, free. You're in a you, new you, era. You are in a new era. Wow. <laughs> Okay. For sure. That's oh, yeah. some toxic energy and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> what if Winston does it? No, if it's a $800 return. A, what would Winston buy? A circular saw, I imagine? <laughs> a 
like, oh my God. Right. So he has a circular saw. It's in the trunk. He's but, like, I've got to return this. He, he gets bought cash. a spray painter thing for the yard to do markings around the yard. For markings? Stuff. What is he, a referee? Yeah, for like the irrigation because we got our yard plug. He's like all into that stuff right now. So there you go. So if it was a $20 thing from Home Depot, I would put the same equation on him. But if it was a, you know, sauna that's like a few thousand dollars, then no. That's different. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say, I would say 200 and above is a different level. He's like, you got to talk about that. 200 and above, it goes back in. Okay. But 199 if this was Price is Right, Rachel's safe. This is her own free money oh, man, to use. Oh, man, 200. I mean, maybe 100. But for sure. 45. Winston, are you listening, my man? You got 199 bucks to spend without her having a word. <laughs> you got this. Go return some stuff. Go return some stuff. That's a good one, though. Yeah. Especially when it's cash. Because, like, are you going to take do the cash? Do you feel that at all? I know we're kind of joking about girl math. No, I do. Well, here's what I would do personally. Yeah. I use cash for my haircuts for a cash discount. So I would just go, like, that goes in my little cash envelope for haircuts. But does that feel like a free haircut, then? It feels like a free haircut. Okay, so you feel the emotion, too. Yeah. It's real. But, like, depositing it, depositing at the bank to put that money back in the bank to then budget for it, I right. don't know that I would do that, yeah. truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for lot. your honesty. Yeah, thank you. From the budgeting queen. Okay. Girl math scenario number three. You take yourself to Starbucks because PSL season has officially begun. You're living your best life. You have a plaid J. Crew scarf around your neck, fuzzy socks beneath your Uggs. You're living your best life. Main character energy. Hallmark puffy puffy girl. vests from, Lul from Lululemon. Have you all seen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some great vests right now going what on. What does Girl Math say about buying this PSL at Starbucks? What does Girl Math say about that? The money is loaded in your app. That's a oh, good well, that changes everything. That feels like a free drink. <laughs> free drink. You're like, wow, already, Starbucks has blessed me with a free PSL. You've already, yeah, it all, yes. And then you probably, let's be honest, because everyone gives Starbucks gift cards. It's like the thing people still give. So you probably have one of those loaded hint, in hint, there. Send Rachel Starbucks gift cards. You probably have like a like a dollar sixty eight left on one of these when you scroll. So like you get extra money. It's just like a ultra free drink. Wow. Yeah, my emotions are detached after that. Uh, is loaded. It's the same with Chick Fil A. I feel the same with Chick Fil A. The money is loaded in the app, therefore it doesn't feel like you actually. That's right. Because what happens with our family it. is like I go to Pegs. I always do the pre order on the Chick Fil A app. So when we get up there to the drive through, it's already done. Or we go sit down, it's already in there. Uh, but you have to purchase right through the app, and usually I'll have like seven dollars and twenty eight cents left. So they're like, so I'll put an extra fifty on. Well, next time we go, it's just a bunch of free money on there. So it feels like we went to Chick-fil-A for free, especially, especially if it's the next month. That's what Chick-fil-A wants you to think. And then it feels like the next month you're not having to like log a meal. Yeah. They want you to forget that you just spent $43 for fast food. <laughs> I know, I know, I That's know. real. You know what I did? Because hmm. I experienced this too at Starbucks. I had auto reload on at Starbucks. So if it went oh, below my amount, wow. it would just automatically reload 10 bucks. Well, that's how they make their money. So I... Turned off auto reload, Rachel. I was really okay. proud of myself because I tell people to do this. Now we're on a budget. We're debt free. It's great, right? Yeah. But I realized I'm more conscious now about Starbucks purchases when I have to manually reload it with an extra For 10 sure. bucks to make that purchase. Because mm -hmm. you, you don't realize that PSL was $6.88. And if you swiped your debit card for that or paid cash, yep, you, you would, would feel, feel it. it but when it's in the for app, sure. it's like, well, yeah. I know. The Thank emotion you for the starts gift. to be detached. It's a real, it's a real thing. That's good. Is Winston guilty of any boy math habits? Like, have you noticed anything? I'll say man math. I think that's more appropriate for Winston. Man math. I don't think anyone's calling him a boy. What at would this man juncture. math be? It would be like, um, I don't he know. He could justify a tool because it saved him money versus him yes. paying someone else to do that yes. same job with that tool. A hundred percent. Yep. Is that man math? That would be man math. I'll buy a circular saw. But in a way, it <laughs> It's all about the circular saw. But in a way, it makes sense because you really would save, right? Versus someone, a plumber coming out. If you have some tools, Potentially. you fix it. But then the math, like with your outfit, it's, well, I'm going to use this saw at least, you know, five times a year for projects. Yeah. So it'll even out. And I believe that. Maybe I believe all this justification of all this math. I don't even know what you use a circular saw for. I don't, I don't even know what a circular saw is. Is it the kind that's like... It's a circle. And Hint. it goes, Murr. It definitely does a murr sound. <laughs> we're, we're really close. <laughs> we're getting there. This we're getting is good. there. We're getting there. Well, before we teach our friends about our version of girl math, let's break down one more example, Rachel. Yeah, or maybe they spend $20 of their fun money to buy our new favorite game, Tapple. 
That's a good one. Tapple is so fun. So keep in mind when you do this, you can play multiple times a year for many, many years to come, which means it's basically free. It's basically a free game. So for real though, in our opinion, Tapple is a great investment for your family. It's less than $20 and it's endless fun. So start making memories today. Order Tapple at Walmart or wherever you buy games. It's a great one. That's money well spent. We love Tapple. Better than Chick-fil-A. It's so fun. It's so fun. All right. So it's time to teach the ladies and the gents about our version of girl math. And we'll call it Ramsey arithmetic. Yeah. How does that hit you? Is that? Yeah. Not as like young and hip as the girl math, but we'll go. Arithmetic feels very like it, Little House d- on the Prairie to me. I feel like we should might as well have an abacus up here. <laughs> you know, why did I say that? It does. To kill a mockingbird, right? You're way above my pay grade right now. Listen, it's been Atticus, 25 years. Did you just say Atticus? Abacus. abacus. Oh, the abacus. original way they did math with a little— they. Oh, I the, thought you said Atticus. I was like, it's very To Kill a Mockingbird, which arithmetic works in that too, I feel like. Do you know what an abacus is? It's the old school. No. They have like a little ball, and they move it over to do math, and they'll like slide. Oh, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. My children had that. Not that I didn't your know children what, had an abacus? Yeah, with all the color beads. Yeah. Yes. When were it was your a children Melissa born? And Doug, a Melissa and Doug toy. I don't even know what that is. You don't know Melissa and Doug yet? It's no. the wooden toddler toys? Oh, you'll see. It's the fancy schmancy toys. It sounds like the Cruz family is going to be getting Mia a little gift this Christmas. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> a Melissa and Doug toy, whoever they are. Hey, I did get her a smock dress after we talked about it here, didn't I? I can't wait to put her in that She's and parade so her <laughs> around. She's going to be the and belle of the came ball. with a bonnet and George was like, wow, <laughs> You know when you smile so big, you're like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> it really was gorgeous if she was born in 1903. <laughs> like, she would be the talk of the town. Re- it was a really sweet dress. It's really sweet. Well, she doesn't have an opinion on it well, yet. Well, here's what you have to do is you have to put her in it and take a picture and send it to me. That's what that's what you're supposed to do with baby gifts. Like, after they're playing with it or using it, you're like, look, look at Mia. Once she can fit. We'll put her in it. I know. So what is the Ramsey version of girl math? How do we do this the right way, Rachel? Ramsey arithmetic starts with a budget. We kind of were throwing that word in and out of this conversation, but it's a real. I mean, honestly, when you have a budget, everything just feels more in control. And I feel like that's when we can kind of have fun with this and kind of joke about the $45 or the like extra money on an app. Because overall, you know you're in control. And that's what's key. But if you don't have any plan— if you have no control, then that's where things start to get a little dicey. That's true. Well, mm-hmm. and there is a little bit of this attitude where it's kind of funny to be like, I'm so broke, but then also do the girl math. And so what right, I'm trying right. to rally against, like, that's fun. I yeah. love watching your TikToks, ladies. But I also want you to hit your financial goals yes. and be a homeowner and invest for the future. That's right. And to do that, you got to get on a budget. And if you want to save for stuff and buy things, we're all about you having that stuff. We don't want it to have you. That's right. So create sinking funds to save a little bit over time and do it with money you actually have. You know what? That's a good point because when we were growing up, do you remember like the Valley Girl trend? Do y'all remember like the Valley Girl? Yeah, like Talking Valley talk, Girl. Yeah, girls oh. would like Talk Valley Girl and you would kind of sound dumb it, that was like the cool thing back when I was like in high school, middle school. And so in a way, this trend of like girl math, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so done with it's money. It's Valley Girl like, coming back. Yeah, in, in its own sense, but with money. So like, yes, we can laugh at it and it's funny. But like if I had my daughter talking like a Valley Girl, there would be a point that I'm like, okay, let's actually like learn how to not use like every other word. Let's use Let's know how to speak. And that's the same with this girl math is like after a while, it gets funny. Like we get it. We can all laugh at it. But then like, no, really though, when you're actually in the real world, let's know what to do. We want you to be wise. Like it's a, a, you know, it's a maturity thing, an impressive thing when you're a woman that knows how to handle her money and you're not, yeah, joking about being broke all the time. That's a good analogy. So a budget is like, you're helping your money talk well. Yeah. You're helping your money sound (laughs) Educated. <laughs> I don't know. I like that. So what do you think about this whole girl math mentality? You know, I think it's funny because I think part of it is truthful. Like, as we were all joking about, there is a part of me that could justify it. It's vulnerable. All it's like we purchase. all do it. Relatable. Yes, because it's a psychological thing, too, and they're just calling it out. So I think, again, recognizing it, sure, we, we're not going to be perfect. We're all going to fall into that tendency. Over, grace. Yeah. Grace over time. But your overall financial picture can't suffer because of girl math. Thank you for that's what that. I would say. I'm glad you're here to help me understand this all, Rachel. Yeah. So that's it, Jorns. This one's for the girls. <laughs> and for enjoy? my, how did you feel about for that? For my hygiene homies out there, this one was for you too. Short, Short King Kings. Summer. Short, Short King Summer. It's you. happening, guys. If you're mm. five eight or under, 
Hit me up. Here Let's you start are. this club. Okay, so it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. Lindsay? Dun, dun, dun. Have you ever purchased something that wasn't in budget and then returned it because of buyer's remorse? Oh, oh, you mean like gosh. guilt and shame? Mm-hmm. That's a nice way to say buyer's remorse. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it's so like there's the a girl good map example. is pretty much like you don't feel guilt. Okay, Whitney, can I? If Whitney did it, does that count? Sure, it's a story. But I made her not. Okay, here's the story. Oh my gosh, I'm so curious. Fun story. So there's this thing called a push present, guys. This is new information to me. If your wife is having a baby, you have to get her an extra gift because she had a baby. <laughs> That's a push present. And she's, Whitney is so low key. She's very totally. like, doesn't ask for much. But her friend was over with these sunglasses. Mm. And so her friend calls me and he's like, uh, Whitney was commenting a lot about how much she loved my sunglasses. I was like, great, push present done. I go to the store and I purchase these sunglasses and then I threw up a little bit in my mouth. But I was like, she's worth <laughs> Can it. You tell me what kind? She's delivering a baby into this world. She's it's... worth every penny. They are called crew. crew. Okay. Okay. They're the best. <gasps> they're apparently the best. Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> they seemed like good-looking plastic sunglasses to me. Okay. But they're very expensive. So Whitney gets them. Uh, she's so excited. She opens the gift. She opens this gift, Rachel. You ready for what happens next? Yes. She's like, I think I need to return them. They're too nice. No. I feel bad wearing sunglasses this nice. I was like, no. you deserve it, girl. No. Your main character energy. You just delivered a baby. You're right. And so I convinced her to not return them, even though she wanted to, because they're too nice for her. So she had buyer's remorse. And she didn't even buy them. And it was a gift. That's how amazing Whitney, of a person she is. She's so great. I'm glad she kept them. We went to the store. She re- I was like, hey, you can choose any. If you don't like this color, she w- walked around the store. She couldn't do it. She was like, I just can't. I think I need to return them. Wait, did them. she really return them, though? She was about to. And I went to the store. Okay, I was but like, you did convince them. I was like, we're going to hold on to them. I'll convince her. So... I'll drink to that, to Whitney. Wow, to Whitney. Whitney, what a saint. Woman of the year. What a saint. Give her a few weeks, she won't regret it. Good. What a saint. It's because she's friends with people like Lindsay, who are bougie, and so that helps her yeah, step like into here. her bougie main character no. energy. <laughs> we love it. Bougie, bougie on a budget. <laughs> bougie on How a budget. How about you? Any <laughs> buyer's remorse lately? I know, that's what I'm trying to think. I don't know if I— You have I mean, no regrets. I mean, that old Amazon outfit that wasn't supposed to be— Washed in my washing machine, apparently. It was pretty sad. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I feel like if you no, make I a don't... purchase, you don't go home and you're like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have yeah, done that. Yeah, I mean, like, if it doesn't fit or it looks weird, I'd take it back. Have That's you ever bought remorse. something that, like, you didn't I mean, sure have in I... budget, but you justified it somehow? I'm sure. That's what's hard is I'm like, at some point in my life, yes. What it's about Winston's perfect. Rock Garden? <laughs> Any regrets there? <laughs> Any regrets about the Rock Garden? Uh, what did we, what have we bought that we're like, man, we just don't, I mean, I feel like Winston buys the more expensive stuff. I buy all like the. But it's more I, sparse. Yes, yeah, more like sparse. He's like a few times a year. Yeah, he but goes like he big. was like into like road biking for a while. I mean, he hasn't been on that bike in years. You know what I mean? Like. Shots fired, bro. It's kind of that kind of stuff that you're like, <laughs> get hey, on it's that a bike. hobby thing. Yes. They get into I their can, hobbies I'm and then they don't. Too. Yeah. That's why I don't have hobbies. I'm like, how long am I going to stick to this? What am I going to do? I don't know. Don't even start I know. It. You know, I'll drink just to finish it out. To Winston sure biking get, again. May to he Winston use the on bike. the road bike. To and to Whitney's glasses. She's going to love them. May she actually wear them. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is good. Yeah. I May, mean, soda I, water. I if you just want to make a mocktail. Yeah. I mean, I basically finished it, George. What's so your rating on this? I'm going to have to go 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Maybe a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. But I think I would feel confident to drink it again. You and know, as I got delicious. to the bottom, it got better because the Kahlua sat at the bottom. I should have stirred it a little bit. Yeah. It kind of changes. The layers change as you yeah, get lower. Yeah, I think lower. it's supposed to be kind of like that. That's why it's called so a mind here. eraser, uh, I guess. I know, it's, crazy. it's a very aggressive name for a very simple drink. So good. I'm going to go 8 out of 10. Okay. That's I liked fair. it. I like a more complex, interesting drink, but this is a <sighs> solid go-to Man, beverage. If you serve it to me. King symptoms right there. Wow. <laughs> that is not main character energy. That is bully energy. <laughs> Here's what's in it. Kahlua, which is a coffee liqueur, vodka, and soda water. I mean, Very it's so simple. Easy. It comes out to 232 a glass, so cost effective. Yep. And you can find the recipe in the show notes if you want to uh, get the ratios on that. Give it a try this weekend. It's very refreshing. 
Yes. It's, if you I like think it's great. Espresso martinis, you like cold brew coffee. Yes. You like coffee flavored anything. You would it's like very it. light, but it kind of reminds me of like a Coca Cola. In soda water, vibe. vodka, and Kahlua, you can use for a lot of different things too. So it's not like a very specialty thing that you're having to buy for this one drink. That's true. So that's good. And if you want to make it a mocktail, just drink soda water. <laughs> that's it's it. that easy. <laughs> Okay, it's almost closing time. So, you guys, uh, thanks for watching and listening to this episode. Make sure to subscribe our subscribers and leave a review. We love reading the reviews. You guys are amazing. You really are. We love you guys. And we'll see you next Thursday on an all-new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. Cheers.